Growing up, my ultimate dream was to play professional sports. The advice that I clung to my entire life was seemingly straightforward. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And this mantra fueled an unwavering intensity in my training, which is ultimately what got me into playing college baseball. And as I got into college, my weeks were a whirlwind of activity. I was hitting the gym five times a week with three of those days being dedicated to two a days on top of practicing five days a week. I was relentless and driven by the desire to be that dude convinced that sheer strength and unmatched athleticism were my golden tickets into the big leagues. And by any like, like general standard of strength and athleticism, I was on track. I'd squatted over 500 pounds and I sprinted a 6960, which is far from slow. Yet, despite being in the best shape of my life, strong and agile, my velocity or my pitching speed just was at a plateau. And for any pitcher with dreams of going pro, clocking in at 90 miles an hour consistently isn't just a goal. It is the absolute baseline to even have a look and frustratingly, I was just below that threshold. And the realization of where I fell short didn't hit me until after I'd retired my cleats and was navigating an identity crisis, often finding some form of solace at the bottom of a glass of Jack. And it was during this period of reflection and a little bit of too much drinking that it dawned on me. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. My approach to training though filled with grit and sweat, lacked a critical element, specificity. Pitching, a skill that hinges on a complex set of biomechanical movements, is not just about being fit or strong. It's about honing a very specialized set of movement patterns in something that requires very targeted, specific training to master. And we humans are uniquely capable of throwing objects with precision and velocity, and this skill demands more than just general strength and conditioning. And so many of us just take and believe the advice of just work hard and you'll make it. But that advice, like my training for baseball, isn't specific enough. And there's a principle in exercise science known as the SED principle. And SED stands for specific adaptation to impose demands. The body will become better at whatever you do or don't do. You don't move, the body will make it easier for you not to move. If you move, your body will allow more movement. And the said principle theory states that your body adapts to the specific stresses you put on it. If you want to improve at something, you need to train in a way that specifically targets that activity. The more specific the goal, the more specific the input towards that goal needs to be. This is why someone that has lost weight and is healthy isn't necessarily jacked or ripped. Healthy is an astronomically general term. On the other hand, that's why despite Patrick Mahomes' pretty standard or average looking physique, he's still one of the best athletes in football because he trains specifically for his sport and his specific position with his specific capabilities. And in my case, I was just viewing being in shape and athletic as being good enough to become a pitcher that could potentially go pro, but I wasn't training specific enough. So I didn't get the result I was after and I stayed aggressively average despite being in insanely good shape and arguably a really damn good athlete. When we don't understand the said principle, it makes it easy for us to fall into analysis paralysis. We have so much information available to us and everyone telling us the right way to do something, but we try all of it and none of it works. And this is because the advice that you are getting is only as good as the context and the situation that you as an individual are currently in. Your situation has to match the situation of the avatar or the person that the content creator was thinking about at the time of creating the content. And this is why knowing what your goals are and where you are on the path and how you plan on getting there is so important. And once I was made aware and internalized the said principle, I was able to start looking at things a little bit deeper. The secret to change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. And understanding all of this, made it so that I can filter out what content is relevant to me to where I am in the process and I know where to seek answers now because I'm looking specifically for what I am supposed to do within the context of my own personal situation. So if we have a goal or a problem, then the first step starts before you even research for all the answers. And it all starts with the frame of the context that you are researching in. So how do we frame the context? 
first, what am I trying to accomplish? We have to have a specific goal or something that we are specifically going after. Where am I in the process or the journey? Awareness of where you are and your unique situation is going to tell you where you should look because you should probably take advice from people that were just recently in a similar situation. Who do I have to be? You know yourself and you know whenever you are bullshitting yourself. So you need to become the person that you need to be in order to achieve the goal that you're after. When can I reasonably have this achieved by? Is this a week-long project? Two weeks? Month? A year? If it's a massive goal, like you're trying to generate a million dollars, then very rarely is this going to be able to be done in a month for most people. But understand how long a goal is going to take is important so you know how much intensity you need to bring consistently, but also whenever to chill and rest so that you can continue to drive intensity and energy and focus into the thing that you are trying to do. And this should be something that you see as being achievable, but could also stretch you just a little bit. And the last question you need to ask to frame everything is why am I doing this? I know it's cliche, but why you are doing something is important. And the trick here is it can be 100% selfish. It does not have to be this big altruistic, like, oh, I want to change the world. I want to do it for my family, blah, blah, blah. No, the emotion is the most important thing here because you're, the emotion is what's going to keep you motivated to work and also make better decisions or faster decisions so you can filter through what's going to work and what's not. Your why should hit you hard enough that you are able to get yourself to do things even when you don't feel like it. And all of this information and framing it this way is going to keep you from going down rabbit holes and causing even more analysis paralysis. And this is because the human brain thrives on constraints when it comes to productivity and effectiveness. When we have constraints, what happens is we get enhanced focus because when we're faced with limited options or resources, the brain automatically directs its attention more sharply and all of the irrelevant details and distractions tend to just kind of fade away, allowing you to laser focus on whatever task you're going into. Second, we get improved decision making because with fewer choices, the brain expends less energy on the evaluation process and this frees up cognitive resources for deeper analysis into better decision making. The constraints act as a filter, eliminating options that are clearly not ideal and streamline the selection process. We also get increased creativity and it might seem counterintuitive, but constraints can actually spark creativity because by limiting the amount of options you have available, the brain is forced to think outside of the box and find new solutions to problems. And this can lead to unexpected approaches and novel ideas and hello, the brain loves novelty that wouldn't have emerged in the situation with limitless options. We also get boosted motivation. Completing a task within constraints can be very rewarding. Overcoming limitations and achieving success with a set framework triggers the release of dopamine, which is the primary neurotransmitter for motivation and pleasure. And this positive reinforcement strengthens the association between constrained work and satisfaction, motivating you to continue to do the thing. And last, we get efficient resource allocation. So constraints act as boundaries, preventing mental resources from being scattered across various possibilities. And this allows the brain to dedicate its full capacity to the task at hand, leading to more efficient use of cognitive resources and ultimately improved results. And the brain is designed in a way to make all this happen because when facing constraints, the prefrontal cortex becomes more active, focusing attention on selecting the relevant information to work within the limitations. The anterior cingulate cortex or the ACC plays a role in conflict resolution and error monitoring. So when dealing with constraints, the ACC helps identify potential deviations from the limitations that you have set and guides the adjustments to stay within whatever your boundaries are. The basal ganglia, which is often involved in habit formation and motor learning, helps establish new patterns of thought and behavior that are effective with those limitations that you've set, which can lead to development of more efficient and innovative routines for yourself so you can find new answers. And now the release of dopamine is also crucial for the process because successfully completing a task that has triggers makes us feel really damn good. It makes us feel accomplished and it keeps us wanting to go back for more. And lastly, the default mode network 
This is the network that typically is active whenever you're daydreaming or you get distracted whenever you know you need to be doing something else. But with constraints, it's suppressed. And this suppression allows for a more focused and goal-oriented state of mind, which reduces distractions and irrelevant thoughts. And this is where a lot of the talk about flow comes into, into play. Constraints help you get into flow. And now we have the necessary setup and understanding to take advantage of these constraints to give us a clear path to navigate down as we are trying to solve our problems. So now it's time to start researching. And the questions that we ask while researching are paramount. The quality of the questions that you ask will determine the quality of the results that you get. And these questions that I will be going through make it easier to filter out irrelevant information and filter in the relevant information to your unique situation. So question one, where in the journey is the person giving advice from? A billionaire's advice will be much more relevant to a nine-figure business owner than someone that's not a business owner and making $50,000 a year. A professional athlete's workout routine will be different than a weekend men's rec league athlete. A bodybuilder's advice on nutrition won't be as relevant for someone competing in CrossFit. Where the person is in the journey is important because what I have noticed from my experience is a lot of people that get to a high level forget what it was like when they were at the lower levels. And oftentimes when they give advice, they are giving it through the lens of what they would have done instead based on already knowing everything that transpired. So a lot of times it's not as effective as what it needs to be because they're looking at it through the lens of, ah, this is what I should have done, but they may not have even became who they are today without going through all the crap that they went through. And so the next question we need to ask ourselves is, are they speaking in absolutes aside from universal laws? So all or nothing thinking leaves people with blind spots and everything in the world has nuance and nuance is what brings the discussion down to the level of you as an individual, as opposed to generalized advice. That's just for everyone. And if someone is speaking in absolutes, the advice is more than likely not even something that the person has done themselves within good reason. So then we have to ask, what is the target audience that this person is giving advice to? A copywriter's advice on getting clients may be different than the most effective method for getting clients for wedding planning services. The target audience of a content creator or media personality is only as relevant as the frame in which they are creating the content. The avatar that they envisioned when they were making the content, does that line up to you? And if it doesn't, then you should probably take it with a grain of salt. And some of it may speak to you, but that doesn't mean that the information is relevant to you now. It could only be relevant to the future version of you that you aren't yet. And so after we've asked these questions, now, whenever we're actually watching videos, looking at tutorials, we can take notes, take cliff notes, watch videos, listen to podcasts, reflect after. If it's a specific strategy of something, then just act along like you're going through a tutorial and how I do things is I typically take notes every two to five minutes while I'm watching a video. I'm very intentional about it. And I listen to something for that two to five minutes before I write any notes. And then I pause at that point. And then I try to write notes for everything that I listen to within that two to five minute period to see if I retained any of that information. And this makes it more engaging for me because it forces me to recall recent things, which helps with the stickiness of ideas and knowledge that I want to have up here. And this, that space between notes and listening and writing also helps me make more connections and generate other ideas and potentially new ways of doing things. And so after we have taken notes, now we have to distill those notes down into an easily applicable system. And this needs to be very low effort and we need to set the bar low so we can continue to act on the thing over and over. So if you took videos on nutrition and fat loss, distill it down into a calorie or macronutrient plan that you are going to follow. When I started to create more videos on YouTube, I had to have a simple system this time around because the first time that I started, it was super complicated. I had all these gadgets and whistles, notion dashboards, all this shit. And for this time around, I decided I need to just have Apple notes open. 
I make notes throughout the day and then I write later that day. And then the next day I'll edit and then I'll take down more ideas. And then the following day I'll make the final edits and then boom, I record the video. And that is actually exactly how this video was produced and thought of and everything else. So you need something to build momentum off of. And then lastly, you are going to repeat this until the end of time, until you have the resources to be able to maybe buy, like hire people to do things for you or hire a coach or whatever that might be. But the said principle is what is going to help you develop skills faster because specificity is what is going to drive the decisions that you make in whatever endeavor that you're going after. And those decisions become higher leverage and more effective the more you do it. So till next time, peace.